All right, we're going to look now at angles in standard position and what that term standard position means when you're talking about angles. An angle obviously is a type of measure of rotation of uh, one arm, this initial arm, around to this what you call the terminal arm, the start and the end, right? You have the initial means start and terminal means end. And you think of it that way as a rotation around this point here, right? It's not a measure of distance or anything like that. It doesn't matter whether these two arms are really short or whether they're long. It has to do with how much rotation has happened there. Now, to look at what, what we mean by standard position, let's flip over to something here that we can work with. There's that angle. All right, right now it's an angle of 58.5 degrees or roughly 1.02 radians. Standard position means putting this angle on a set of axes. So if we turn on a grid here and we put a set of axes there, there's a set of axes. It means putting it on a set of axes so that that point of rotation is at the origin and the initial arm is on the positive x-axis. That's standard position. Taking your angle, now if we want to put it back to, I don't know if I can get it to be exactly what I had before, 58.5. I can maybe get it close. I won't fiddle around too much, but oh, I had it there. There we go. Hey, there's that angle. That same angle is now in standard position because it's got the initial arm on the positive x-axis and the point of rotation here, this vertex, is at the origin. And the, the angle is the positive direction is counterclockwise here, right? The rotation is from there to there, all right? That's standard position. Now, to be able to use standard position and talk about and think about angles being in standard position, it would help if you're familiar with roughly, you know, where, uh, where an angle is if you look at an angle in terms of what quadrant it's in and, uh, and so on. So, Remember that we have quadrant one up here where X and Y are both positive, and then going around they're numbered to do with this, right? If angles start here at zero degrees or zero radians, and positive angles are go counterclockwise here, that's why the quadrants are numbered the way they are, or one reason anyways. Alright? So if you're talking about angles, uh maybe we could get rid of this scale here and clear things up a little bit. There we go. And let's temporarily get rid of these angles here. There we go. Now, if we're going to rotate this around here, uh, if we want to show an angle of 140 degrees, we've got to know that that's 90 and that's 180. So 140 is going to be somewhere in here. If that's 90, it's going to be 50 past here. So it's going to be a little bit past halfway there. Somewhere around that, right? If you're going to draw it or sketch it or think about it. If you're going to put an angle of 200 degrees, though, you got to know that that's going to end up in quadrant 3 over here somewhere, somewhere down there, 180 plus another 20. If you're going to show or draw an angle of 307, well, it's going to be here because this is going to be 270, and then you're going to have some more down to here, all right? And then... Of course, angles that are between 0 and 90 are just in quadrant 1. Angles between 90 and 180 over here. Angles between 180 and 270 are here. And angles between 270 and 360 are here. Now, this software doesn't show angles that are more than 360, but you can have angles that are more than 360 when you're talking about this. You would just have to kind of show them. And we're going to move to drawing them on paper here in a second. But you'd have to show them with an arrow that shows you've gone more than one rotation. You have lots of things in life that have more than one rotation. And you talk about um, talk about rotations. Um, various sports have 180s, 360s, uh, 540s, right? Uh, all these kinds of things where you have more than one rotation. You can also have uh, angles that are negative here. So I've got to change this. Uh, we'll put the terminal arm down here somewhere. Show that negative angle. If I'm if I'm rotating backwards here, if I rotate this way, that's a negative angle, right? That's a negative angle right there. That angle is a negative angle. That angle is about, by the looks of it here, judging by my scale, 90, 
and another 45, negative 135. All right, so let's uh, go back to where we can write something, back to the drawing board, and uh, try and show some angles in standard position here. We'll start with a couple in degrees. If we're trying to show 400 degrees here in standard position, you got to figure out what quadrant it's in. And uh, it's positive 400, so it's going to be clock or counterclockwise here, this way. That's 180. That's 360. It's past there. It's past 360 by, a, by 40 degrees, so it's probably there. It's in quadrant 1. If you have negative 250, you're going the opposite way, clockwise. That's negative 180. So you got to go past there. This would be too far. That's 270. We don't want to go that far. So you got to stop just shy of that. Probably about there. And if you want to draw the initial arm too, you can, just to show that you realize it's an angle. We're going to look at some that are in radians as well here. 2.6 radians, you need some reference points. Just like you need these reference points of 180 degrees, 360 degrees, 90 degrees, 270 degrees, you need similar reference points with, with this. If you're looking at uh, radian measures given in decimals, as in not pi fractions or values in terms of pi, you need to have some reference points as follows. And the reference points for radians here, let's get that out of the way so I can have some room here. Reference points for radians that are in uh, decimal form like that. Halfway runs pi, so 3.14, that's a good number obviously, you're pretty familiar with already, to have. And 2 pi all the way around, 6.28. If you know those two numbers, that'll get you started on where you're, where you're going. If we want 2.6, another number that would be good is half of pi, that. Right? Half of pi is half of this number, 1.57, right? That's a good number to know. Because you know for sure 2.5 is going to be over here somewhere. It's definitely in quadrant 2. I think I drew it a little bit too close to pi. Let's redraw that because probably 2.6 is probably somewhere more like this. All right? And if you can do 5 radians... 5 radians is going to be, we know that it's past 3.14, and it's before 6.28. We know that. But uh, this is the good one to know here. That one, if you work it out, it's 1.5 pi, 1.5 times pi. If you do 1.5 times five, pi, you'll find that it's 4.71. So you then at 5 has to be over here somewhere. Right? I probably drew it a little bit too far past there. I'm not doing too well at the Exact, but it doesn't matter as long as you have the quadrant right and the approximate location right. Now, if we're working with exact value uh, angles in radians in terms of pi, like this one, 7 pi over 6. If we're trying to draw 7 pi over 6, you need some reference points again. And the reference points here just work with the actual values in terms of pi. That's pi and that's 2 pi all the way around. We want 7 pi over 6, so think of sixths, right? If we're doing, if we're looking at 7 pi over 6, we got to think of this pi here as 6 pi over 6. If you think of that as 6 pi over 6, then it'll, then it'll be easy to do, right? If this is 6 pi over 6, then 7 pi over 6 is just one pass there, right? 7 pi over 6 is going to be right there, all right? If we're looking at 2 pi over 5, we need some more reference points here. We have, it's definitely less than pi, but uh, we need to know that this is, if we're thinking of pi, this is 5 pi over 5, and this is 0 pi over 5, the starting, right? 2 pi over 5 is closer to 0 than it is to 5 pi, right? 2 fifths pi is less than halfway around here, so it's halfway around to pi, so it's going to be, that's kind of a terrible looking arrow. It's going to be somewhere right there, right? Two, two pi over five. If you imagine this whole thing divided into five pieces and take only two of them, there you got your two pi over five. Nine pi over four. If we're going to try and think of this one, let's move it up here so we can see a bit more. Nine pi over four reference points again. There's pi, which we're thinking of as four pi over four. So this is four pi over four, which would make this eight pi over four. 
but it's past that. It's one more right to there. Right? Because if you think about it, 4 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, and one more than that, one more pi over 4, it's as far as that. Okay, more than one rotation. You can just show it with an arrow around like that. And uh, last year, this is, uh, I meant actually meant to have a 1 there. I think I erased it by accident. Um, 19 pi over 13. If we're going to draw that in standard position, we got to know some, use some of our reference points here again. There's pi. If we're thinking of 13 think of this as 13 pi over 13. And think of one full rotation as twice as much as that, 26 pi over 13. All right, if you're thinking of, of each of those things, then we know where it is. Well, we know it's more than halfway around, but the question is, is it just before there or just after there? Well, think of the numbers involved. We got 13 pi over 13, 26 pi, but we want 19. 19 is 6 away from this, but 7 away from that. So that's going to tell you that it's closer to here. So it's only to there, right? Because it's closer to this one, closer to 13 pi over 13 than 26 pi, right? So if you use some reference points, whether you're working in degrees, okay, use these reference points. Or if you're working with radians in, in decimal form, work with numbers like that. And if you're working with exact pi fractions, with pi and 2 pi, and then make them whatever fraction you need. If you need quarters, think of pi as 4 pi over 4. If you need thirteenths, think of it as 13 pi over 13, and it'll be easier than you think.